Greetings everyone and welcome back to the bench. Today on the bench I have another review. Oh no, he's doing another review. I can hear it already. But, you know, I think you might like this one. I certainly do. I think it's an interesting product. So what we have here is a, ooh, a high precision internal resistance tester. So what is that? Well, it's essentially made for testing batteries. And it has the fringe benefit of being able to measure low value resistors pretty accurately. So it's the HRM10 by Finerci. And if you're familiar with this company, I, I reviewed a couple of their oscilloscopes. They make budget products for people, you know, the weekend warrior, the hobbyist who don't want to spend a lot of money on a meter or a oscilloscope. You know, they may not be flawless, but they work well enough, I think, for most hobbyists. Fenersi's also been kind of diversifying their products now. They have, you know, stuff like this. They also have a radiation meter, and I guess it's a little night vision, monocular camera type thing. I'd like to review those things as well. Those look like interesting products. But today we're going to take a look at this internal resistance tester. Here's some information on the back if you want to pause and read it. So here is the unit itself. I'll just keep the uh, screen protector on it. It feels fairly solid. It's not creaky or anything. It doesn't have rubber bumpers on it, though. Now, it requires a special probe. You can see here is where it connects. Here is the probe itself. We'll connect it up here. Now, the reason they do that is because it's a four-wire type connection called a Kelvin connection. The point in doing that is so you can measure the voltage and not have to carry current through the same wire. So they bring the two wires in each side of the leads here up and connect them near where you're actually taking the measurement. That just helps with accuracy. So this thing also comes with the little USB connector because it can log data and of course a manual. Okay, I attach the probe. It has a little index connector and you just screw that down. And to fire it up here, you just press the button and it boots right up pretty quick. So it shows you the voltage and the resistance. So before we get into the menus and everything, let's uh, take a few measurements because I think that's the neat part of this device. It has a little tilt-out stand that we can set right here. And I'll grab a battery. So I have this old battery from like 11 years ago. And I know it's not doing so well. I tried to charge it the other day. And um, let's see if I can get this in the shot here so yeah I did attempt to charge it and uh, didn't have very good results so it has these little clamp on um, probes here so let's put that on there uh, yeah 9 volts it's not doing so well and it also measures the internal resistance 12 ohms yeah, that's going to be a problem. As soon as you load this thing with anything, the voltage is going to fall off a cliff. So it's kind of giving you uh, an open load and also able to measure the internal resistance. So interesting how they do that. So let's try a good battery now. Okay, this battery is like three years old. I took it out of my UPS, installed a new battery, but that was kind of unnecessary. This battery is still pretty good. So let me uh, 
connect the probes. So yeah, I charged this up, gave it a good float charge, and um, that's pretty typical of a very good battery. Uh, you know, it's measuring at 13.2 volts, and you can see the internal resistance is 55 milliohms. So yeah, very good battery indeed. So I didn't really have to replace it, but I thought I would anyway. But I have that battery around to use for other purposes. So we can check small batteries as well. Though these uh, leads are not really geared for that. But you can still kind of hold it on there as I bump the camera. So this battery is about 1.2 volts and 2 ohms, that seems a little high. You have to uh, make sure you're getting a really good connection. Okay, that's more like it, about 1.1 ohm internal resistance. So yeah, this VAT battery is pretty worn. You know, that's why... It still might run something like an LED, a small LED flashlight, but if you try to put it in one of those older digital point and shoot cameras that took batteries, it, the camera will just not want to turn on or it'll say the battery's low. Kind of wish my camera had a little wider angle lens here. It's a bit tight. But here is the JAT 801, and I can hear the comment section blowing up. Uh, when are you going to finish this project? Yeah, I know. It's one of these things I uh, put aside. and I, Yeah, something I want to finish at some point. So, yeah, this meter will measure small value resistors pretty well. So I'm measuring a 0.22 ohm emitter resistor. And there you see 218 milliohms. So it's well within the tolerance of those resistors. And you know with a regular meter, sometimes you have to short the probes and hit relative if the meter has a relative button on it. And then try to measure the low value resistance. But, you know, as you can see here, this does it with a lot more precision. And I don't really have high precision, low value resistors to check its accuracy with. But if you do need to measure low resistances, you have that capability. Okay, let's try these. These are the lowest value resistors I have on hand. These are 0.1 ohms or 100 milliohms. Let's see what this thing has to say. Uh, looking through a viewfinder here. And look at that. 100 milliohms or 0.1 ohm. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the features of this thing. Of course, it's push button control. Has a little color LCD screen. It does have the date and time because you might want to log measurements of a certain battery. And uh, I would assume with that information, it would also log the date and time. Uh, battery life is very good. I've been using this thing. I've let it sit on the bench and auto power off after 15 minutes a couple times and it still says the battery's full. Normally I just use it in auto, but you can press this button here like uh, V for voltage or the resistance and you can hit the left and right range to change the uh, the value. You can see it shows the range you're in right there. But like I say, I normally use an auto. Same with the voltage. You can set a voltage range. It's important not to go over 100 volts with this thing or connect it to AC. So when checking batteries you know, stay within 100 volts. If you press the OK button here, you can hold your measurement if you want to do that. 
If you press and hold this right button here, it takes you into a menu. And I have several options here. Uh, sorting mode, see what that's all about. Uh, I guess you can set upper limits, lower limit. That might be like a pass-fail thing. Yeah, there's a pass and a fail. So, okay. How do you get out of that? Okay, we're back to the menu. History, records. I don't think I... Yeah. If you save anything, it'll show up here. But I don't have anything to save. So, yeah, to go back, I just hold this for a couple seconds. Uh, voltage calibration, resistance calibration, I'm not going to monkey with that. Volume, I'm going to adjust the beep. Time setting, uh, brightness setting, Let's see how this thing is. Okay, it's already set full. Oh, I just okay that one. Um back to the top of the menu clicky buttons language auto power off Let's see yeah I got it set for 15 minutes right now I wonder if I can go back yeah I, I wish this this would loop in the menu if you press up it would loop to the bottom but instead I have to go all the way down uh, factory default, and I guess that's it. Here's some information in the manual about the sorting mode. If you want to read that, I'm not going to go through all of that. Make the video twice as long. Uh, you can sort the data and export it to the computer and all that. Well, it seems the lawnmower battery is going bad here. 10 volts. Almost half an ohm. That's not going to get it done. Yep. So now I have to go buy a battery for this thing. A little disappointing, it didn't last that long. Maybe like four years. Used to getting almost ten years out of these lawnmower batteries, but oh well. So yeah, I guess I'm gonna wrap up my review of this. Yeah, I think this thing is really neat, pretty handy. Something I'm going to hang on to. Well, thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. It's set in auto right now. Oh, crap.